Hey guys, it's Kaya. I have been gone for a while because, you know, like Corona days, life, tax money, all those things that happen at the beginning of the year, but I am back. I have a amazing tutorial for you today. We're going to do something super complicated, but really easy. It's going to give you a really big bang for your buck with your customers. So I'm going to be working on mason jars today. Oh gosh, look at my nails. Jesus, don't look at them. Let me put another glove on. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to be working with mason jars today because that is one of my favorite bases and they are substantially cheaper than stainless steel. So I have this mason jar. It's just been washed with, um, you know, normal dish detergent and dried. I have my epoxy and I mix these in equal parts. This is Envirotex brand. This is my brand of choice. Bought it at Michael's. Um, you can get it with a coupon there. So I have those mixed in equal parts. I have about 15 milliliters mixed into my cup. And then you just want to stir it really, really well. It should be clear, not hazy. You want to stir really well for about three minutes. I also have a piece of paper underneath my cup because it's going to catch all my loose glitter. So I've got my gloves and I'm just going to spread my epoxy on evenly just going up to that rim there with a, where the thread start um, if you are a messy epoxier you can always tape off those threads um, I do these all the time so I've got these pretty much down but you just want to take your glove and we are going to actually um, apply our glitter with the epoxy method this is what this is called so you don't need a lot of epoxy. You really just want enough to coat your glass. Make sure that you get the bottom. And just run your hand across the entire glass to make sure you're not missing any spaces. Usually if you got a space that's not covered with epoxy, your glove is going to kind of snag on it. It's not going to glide across as evenly. So you just want to get all that epoxy on there. And I still have epoxy left over. It doesn't take very much at all. I always make a little bit extra just because I know that the glitter is going to soak up some. And anytime I make extra epoxy, I always have a mold on hand. So I'll, I can just dump whatever excess resin is left into this mold. Uh, it'll be a keychain, so there's never any waste. And then I'll just spread that out. It may not fill up this whole mold, and that's okay. Um, you know, I make enough cups that I usually dump, you know, a couple odds and ends into that mold before I actually get a keychain. But it always works itself out. And they make great little fillers at my shows. But anyway, so today I'm using Glittiful um, Cotton Candy Yum Yum. And then I have this glitter, um, it's from a local lady named Joyce. The color is G4406, um, ignore my little bag. It got kind of busted. Can't have loose glitter everywhere. Anyhow, so you're just gonna open your glitter up. And then put your paper underneath and we're just gonna start a sprinkle. For my ombres, I start at the top and work my way to the middle. Oop, you know what, I'm missing, I'm missing a step. Hold on one second, heat gun. Whenever I do my epoxy method, I apply my heat before I put my glitter on. That way I know there's no micro bubbles, and if you try to heat it up after you put the glitter on, the glitter's gonna blow everywhere. It'll blow off your cup. So I just have this on medium. I have it um, about a fifth length away from my cup. And I'm just giving this a quick blow dry all over. You might notice I have a new turner. It spins just a little bit faster than my other one. So we don't have to blow dry it or we don't have to heat press it for very long. Heat press is on a heat press. Uh, I made a t-shirt earlier today. Just just let me go guys, just, just let me be. Anyway, back to the glitter. 
So I'm gonna start at the top. And I'm just gonna get right up on that thread. And you know, you can always wipe it down afterward if you get it over, but just get up to that thread. And I'm only gonna do two colors on this one. So you just wanna make sure it's a nice even coat. We don't want it splotchy. We don't want it too thick. You just want a nice even coat, just a light sprinkle. Okay, take your paper, dump it back into your bag. Look at that sparkle. Now we're going to do our blue. Oh, snaps. I'm going to use a hole on the bottom of the bag since it's already made. Yeah, that is, this is like a teal, more like a teal than a blue, but I think it'll look really nice. It's actually coming out a little faster than I want. But you, when you get to that middle part, just do like a slight, you want to slightly overlap it into that pink. Not too much, just a little bit. And then I'm going to dump this, oh gosh. I've got to get a shaker for that thing. Dump the excess back in my Ziploc bag of glitter. And then we're gonna take that pink and we're gonna go just back over that middle line. We're not gonna do it thick, we're just gonna do a little bit of sparkle. Just enough that it looks a little bit blended. Your ombre doesn't have to be perfect because once you put the decal on um, and the flood coat of epoxy, that'll also help blend it. You just don't want it to be harsh. So I'm just barely sprinkling that pink right in the middle. So just like that, ooh, hold, on, wait. hold on, I missed a spot. Okay, so now we're just gonna let that sit. I am going to let this spin for about four hours. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do a flood coat because I'm impatient and I can't wait for the first layer to completely dry first. So we're gonna let that spin, give it, you know, four or five hours, and then I'll see you again here shortly. All right, we are back, stage three. My cup is glass. All right, we're back, time for stage three. We are going to apply our decal. Yes, I know my nails are raggedy. The vinyl will stick to my nails, so we're just gonna have to live with it for today. This is just how I live my life. It's it's a crazy life over here. Corona days, that's what we're blaming it on. So anyway, I've got my damask decal. This is just an image that I picked up off of Google. I did a quick cleanup. I've also seen damask file available on Etsy for you to buy that are already cleaned up. Um, I've seen some cookie stencils. You can use those and easily import them into your Cricut machine if you know how to cut stencils and stuff like that. Um, but I just use regular vinyl. I, you can use any color. I chose green because once I apply the spray paint, it'll be easy to see the green. Um, so, you know, pick any color. I don't recommend picking a color that's the same, though. Like, if you did a purple cup, I would not recommend purple vinyl because it's going to be hard to see with the paint. And you're going to be throwing all this vinyl away anyway. So, this is a great time to use up your scraps or use up that brand of vinyl that you didn't really care for. Either way it goes, I've got my design, I've got my tape over it. So I'm just going to peel off the backing. And I've got a couple pieces that didn't get burnished very well, so I'm just going to stick those back on. I'm using uh, a Dollar Tree packing tape for transfer tape because I was out and like at my Michaels, they're only allowing four people in the store at a time and nobody has time to wait in line for that. I had Dollar Tree masking tape. So I'm just going to line. I Everybody applies their decals differently. For me, it works easiest to start in the middle and then work my way out. So I fold my decal in half. And I line it up where I want it to be at the top. And then I just start pressing down the middle. 
and I just kind of hold it up and then I just start pressing out on one side and I just go from top to bottom that way it just gets laid down smooth with no bubbles and when you're working with these bigger um, transfers decals sometimes they can get a little bunched up so if you just start and work with half of it you know that makes it a little easier and I use my turner too because I can just you know I don't have to worry about holding the cup holding it straight my turner is gonna do all that for me and then as I push my decal down I just turn it now I'm gonna go back and do the other side I'm gonna start at my bottom this decal I cut five and a half inches um, that way we cover up the whole front of my glass it's just a tiny bit short on the bottom but that's okay because the bottom of the mason jars curve a little so I made it just a little bit shorter than what the actual measurement of the mason jar glass was and these are the 24 ounce mason jars and they are like the tall one they come in a nine pack they have an asparagus on the front so that's how you know you're getting the right one so i've got my decal down i'm just gonna you know use my finger to burnish it on really well and then i'm gonna pull the tape now i use clear tape make sure you pull all the tape off because what will happen is when you go to spray paint, if you forget a piece of tape, when you pull the tape, it's going to show underneath the glitter and you'll have to go back in and fill that piece in by hand. And that's no fun. So just pull your tape and I just, you know, try to pull it as close to the mason jar as I can. That way it doesn't rip my vinyl coming up. You'll see that because I use tape, I have a little bit of a film on my vinyl, but that's okay. I'm going to be pulling it all up anyway, so that doesn't really matter. I think I have three strips on this glass. Okay, there I got it. Oh, and there's a little bit coming back up. Just push it back down. No big deal. But that's why it's important to, you know, pull the tape flush against your glass. That way it has less chance of pulling up all your vinyl. And if it does pull up, you just stick them back down. Just finish pulling your tape off and then just stick your vinyl back down. The one thing I love about this design is it doesn't have to be perfect. Once you pull that, put the spray paint on and start spray painting it, it'll leave nice crisp lines where your stencil is, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so let's see, I just got that one little one I just need to push back down. And then I'm just going to give it a quick look, make sure all my pieces are down. You see I have like this little tiny pucker right here. Right there, just a little tiny fold. No big deal. Just stick your thumb over it and just make sure your vinyl is down really well. And now, oh, see, I got a little piece of tape here. I got too, got too cocky and there's still a piece of tape on that. And when I would have spray painted it, it would have showed and then I would have been going back in to do, got it. Uh, there's some tape right there too. Is that tape? No, not tape. You see, I'm a little crazy about looking for tape because I had to go back the other day. The one that's in the picture, I had to go back in and paint some of the areas by hand. So, all right. All the tape is gone. So now we're going to take this cup. We're going to take it outside. We're going to spray paint it. Spray paint it in whatever color you choose. My brand of choice is, uh, let me see, I got, I got a bunch of colors. Let's see, I got one. My brand of choice is Rust-Oleum. I do not recommend one of these fluorescent colors. I recommend this. Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover Paint and Primer. I can usually get my cup coated in one layer if I use Rust-Oleum. If I use... Krylon, 
Yeah, yeah. Even though it says paint and primer, I don't like the way that it comes out. It's very thick. I feel like it doesn't always take um, to the glass very well, and it usually takes a long time to dry. So forget the Krylon. Go to Rust-Oleum. Your local Home Depot has all the colors of Rust-Oleum that you could ever need and more, and they are substantially cheaper than what you're going to pay for at Joann's or Michael's. When I went to Michael's, or, yeah, Michael's the other day, they wanted $10.99 for a can of Rust-Oleum. $10.99. I about threw a fit in the store. If it wasn't for Corona days, I would have left all that paint there and went to Home Depot, but I just could not brave the public anymore. So I used my 50% coupon and paid $5. $2.50 more than I wanted to pay, but we're not going to talk about that. Just go to Home Depot and save yourself the trouble. To save yourself the trouble so i'm gonna go outside we'll see you here in just a minute we're gonna do our spray paint layers for stage number four and move on to the final stage number five okay welcome to my outdoor studio anyway so got my cup look at that sparkle in the light oh yes gorgeous got my rust-oleum black ultra primer like we talked about shake it up real real good and then you just want to do light burst light like psh, far away not close to him oh snap my paint is going out lord jesus okay so yes light steady sweeping burst all through the back lord let us have enough paint to finish this cup in jesus name amen y'all know y'all be praying while you craft don't even start okay so light sweeping burst all the way down we don't want to see any glitter now let's say you, we have this area on the back. I left this blank, but you could put a name back here. Just put it down when you put your decal down. And then when you pull it up, their name will be there too. I just chose not to do that on this one. You can leave that space blank and go back later and add vinyl to it or whatever, you know, whatever you choose. I just left it blank for this demonstration. Okay, so as you can see, the glass is all covered up. You see her vinyl under there just barely. I'm going to do the bottom. Make sure I get you, get your edges good. Get your edges no matter what. If it's crafts or hair, make sure we get edges. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to let this dry. rust usually takes about an hour to dry for me before I can, you know, handle it and get my decal off. So I'm going to let it sit for an hour and dry. And then we'll be back for stage four, part two, which is the part I hate the most, which is weeding. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. We're on to peeling the stencil, stage four. So our cup is dry. You're going to see some different hands because I hate weeding. Oh, I hate weeding. So I made Julia, the wife, do it. So Julia, show them your nice little instrument that you're going to use to weed. But now, this little dental pick thing, twisted. So like, yeah, little dental pick thing. You could use this. I have used a push pin when I am desperate. You could use a sewing needle. You can use your bare fingernails if they're long enough. But I would advise, you know, something sharp that'll help you get under some of those edges. Now, do not dig down on your cup because you will dig that sharp pointy end into your epoxy and you'll have a hole or a little divot there. You can pull up some of that epoxy underneath. So very gently, Julia, Show them how to lift up their stencil. Take your pointy end. Mm -hmm. Pick where you're going to start. And I just kind of lift it up and then I hook it into that vinyl and I just pull it straight up. Uh huh. Now take your finger to do And she's going to pull all the vinyl up. You'll have to pull hard. Yeah, good job. And you're going to repeat this painstaking process until you have picked up all the vinyl off your cup. See how fun this is? This is why I make her do it. Because I did the last one. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm terrible at this. But I try. So you see, she's pulling that, picking, putting that, picking that vinyl, and then just pulling it up enough that she can pull it. And then, honestly, if you pull the vinyl like 
similar to how we did the tape if you bend it back and like pull it um so it's flush to the cup it comes up just a little bit easier okay thank you for that tip cause... you don't have any fingernails so i don't know how you're going to get through this but it's gonna be a joy to watch uh come back next month it'll be done all right <laughs> so we're gonna continue this process she's gonna pull up all this vinyl may take all day i don't know but um we will come back when it's time for the final layer to add the epoxy so we'll see you here shortly all right we are back again and i have some q-tips and i have some 91 percent rubbing alcohol and all I'm doing is cleaning up that edges from where I did the messy spray paint. I don't really have any epoxy in that area, just a lot of spray paint. So I'm just taking my Q-tip, dipping it in alcohol, rubbing it around those threads. If you taped it off, you shouldn't have this problem. However, I'm a messy crafter. I am also a busy crafter at home with three children. So, you know, we had to work around them. But anyway, so you just clean, that's how you would clean up those threads. Someone would ask, I figure I'll let you know. But we have our project finished. I did have, we got all the decal off. As you can see, it's still a little sticky from where that adhesive was. Um, but that's okay. Once you put the epoxy on, you won't be able to tell. Let me stop that for a minute. I did have one little area, um, if you can see right here, where it wasn't, my paint got just a little smeared. So that's okay. If you have a problem area like that, just take your little Q-tip and dip it and clean it up real quick. No big deal at all. No one will be able to tell. And now we're going to go. So I've got my epoxy here. It's mixed in equal parts. This is 16 milliliters. I am going to be using Mystique from Glitiful. This is one of my favorite companies. Um... I shop with them all the time. They have great shipping. They have a great group. Their prices are the most affordable glitter I have seen for this kind of quality. When I tell you I only need this much glitter to do this whole cup, that's it. That's it's just the tip of my brush. See how little my brush is? And first of all, can we see how sparkly that is? Is that not amazing? But I only use that much for an entire cup. And it's going to have sparkles everywhere. It's very easy to overdo it, but that is one of my must-have for all my projects. Almost every cup you will see from me has mistake, 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 never a mistake, has mistake on that final layer. So I'm just going to put it in my epoxy. Before I apply it to my cup, I'm going to mix it up and stir it really, really well. You're going to want to wear a glove when you apply this. You want to make sure you're scraping your sides when you're mixing your epoxy. I actually have a video on how to mix and measure epoxy. So go back and take a look at that if you need some assistance. But we're just stir, 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 stir. Go ahead and put our gloves on, get our cup rolling, and finish this baby up. I love this dial. It's so fancy. Um, it does take a little bit of work to get that weeding. I think we spent, I'm going to say 45 minutes weeding. Yeah, like an hour. You know, Jules is a little slow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's definitely a lot of weeding. Um, I use 651 vinyl because that was all I have, and we know that that's permanent. Probably would a little bit would have went a little bit faster if I had used 631. I just didn't have any of that in stock right now. So you can see my I got a little bubbles coming to the top, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna give it one final last stir. I am reusing my glove from earlier. You know, way more important for the hospital workers to have gloves right now than me. So I'm gonna take one temporary second because I see a piece of lint. You know, make sure there's nothing on your cup. And I see two little marks right here. Okay, well, let's just hope those go away. But you see how quick that mystique brings that shine to that black? Like, it's absolutely amazing. And a little bit really does go a long, long way. So you're just gonna smooth the epoxy on. You wanna make sure you get your decal really well. Get all the way up to that edge. You wanna make sure you get your bottom too. Always do the bottom, even if you don't put any glitter down there. 
give it extra to your bottom so you don't have any ridges. You don't want it to be all um, rough there. And then I always just kind of scrape my epoxy off into my hand or a glove that's off into my cup. I didn't feel that it makes sense, but you get what I'm saying. Because it tends to stick quite a bit. I just want to make sure that my damask is really covered. I don't want it to be chipped or anything like that. So I just make sure it's really covered and everything is even. It's the final coat. So I like to do these a little thicker. That way I know I'm not going to have any fish eyes or anything like that. And I won't have to come back. So, like I said before, I always have a mold on hand. This is actually the epoxy that was left over from the first layer that we did. So I'm just going to pour it out into this mold here. And set it to the side. I'll just spread it over here at the top. I wish I had one of those keychains to show you guys what they look like when I'm finished, but my niece was here over the weekend and used all the keychains for coasters because she just loved them, and I have not yet discovered where she left them. I will at some point just in time with me. So I'm going to take my heat gun. We're going to do a short burst all the way around the cup. I will, you want to keep it a fist length away. From your cup you don't want it right on it i usually keep it about a fifth length away i start on low and just all over not in any one spot too long so that we're popping all those air bubbles and then I'm going to make sure I get my bottom too. I'm going to go ahead and let that spin. I am going to clean up my edge one more time just to make sure I didn't get any epoxy on the threads. And then that's it. It's going to spin for eight hours. And then just let it cure and you'll be done. Super easy. Got a lot of fancy bang for your buck. And everybody's going to love you. So we're actually going to give this cup away to subscribers on our YouTube page. So if you like this cup, just comment below with your email address. And at random, we are going to do another video where we use one of those little generator things to pick who receives it. All you will have to do is pay the shipping. I live in Indiana, so we are going to make this available only to people here in the U.S., and we will be doing our giveaway on April the, pick a date, Joel. Today's April 1st, so our giveaway will end on April the, 14th. April the 14th. So you have two weeks to enter to win this cup. And we will do another video where we pick the person and we do all that fancy stuff. Who knows, by then we might have something else to go in your box. So leave your email below in the comments. Let me know what you think about this video. And if you're not already subscribing to my page, please do so. Because I'd love to hear from you guys. And seeing you guys like my video really helps keep me motivated and going. And hopefully now that I'm home for Corona days. And life has slowed down a little bit. We'll have some more videos coming. So thank you for watching. Hope you have a great one.